Welcome dear students to introduction to programming and I have already opened Qt Creator the software we use for writing code so I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to call this project input and array because I want to demonstrate that how can we take input from the user to fill in the array with values I'm going to click next button a couple of times and then finally click finish. I'm going to clean up the code and I'm going to remove these command line arguments because we don't need them. And then in the main function, I'm going to create an array. Um, the type of the array is going to be int so it's going to store only integers and the name of the array is numbers and I'm going to specify the size of the array to be 5. This means that this array can only store 5 integers. Then I'm going to come here and write a comment take input from user using the for loop right but before that let me show you something else if you don't use the for loop what's going to happen right take input from user so we are going to say see out enter an integer and then cn and then the name of the array which is numbers and then the square brackets and within the brackets i have to specify zero which is the first location of the array and I want to store something but I want to take input from the user that's why I'm using the C in statement so whatever the user type on the keyboard some integer value CN is going to take that value right that value and store it in this particular location of the array that means the very first index then if I want to take input for the second um, value then I'm going to simply say increment the index plus one so I'm going to say one right and if uh, I have to do it again for the third index and the second index and the fourth index control C control V control V control V now you already uh, might have noticed that if the size of the array for example is 1 billion or 1 million then we have to write CN and Cout statement how many almost 1 million or billion depending on the size of the array so this worked but this is not the correct solution I mean it's tedious and it's almost impossible for an array of size uh, 1 million let's first give it a try so I'm gonna say Cout numbers zero and whatever we provided is going to be displayed on screen right and then we can use the same structure and say space and then numbers one so for the sake of uh, demonstration I'm going to just print the values of the first two location of the array right so I'm going to save changes and I'm going to run the program and first compile it just to see if uh, we've made any syntax errors and as you can see on the bottom right uh, of this IDE the green line which means there are no syntax errors in our program so I'm going to click this play button which is a run button and run the program and it says enter an integer and I'm gonna say 100 and press enter and then it's gonna say enter another integer so 200 it's going to take five values from user this is the last value and if I hit enter on the keyboard the last statement will be executed and we'll just see the values that we stored on the first two location of the array so if I hit enter on the keyboard, you see 100 and 200. The problem with this code is, of course, if the size of the array is 1 million, then we have to write 
the C out C in statement pair almost one million times. So it's not practical and nobody is going to do that. This is just for the sake of demonstration that if we do not use the loop for taking input from the user, what problem can we get into? So let me uh, remove everything and use a for loop <coughs> for loop to take input from the user right and we're gonna say for i equals 0 sorry control Z i equals 0 control Z i equals 0 i is less than size of the array right so size is 5 so we have to go up to 4 because we start with 0 and then after that we are going to come here and say C out value, integer value, right? Every time the loop runs, um, this statement is going to be executed. And then we are going to provide the value from the keyboard. And CN is going to store that in the numbers I, right? So what I did here, that I'm using the for loop and I start the counter variable which is i in this case um, to 0 and the condition is checked 0 is less than 5 so when it evaluates to true the code will come down here in the body of the for and execute this statement and we will see on the screen integer column space that means type an integer right uh, and to make it even more user friendly we can do something like type an integer and then whatever the user types on the keyboard cn is going to store that value in numbers i numbers subscript i means number zero because the first time the value of i will be zero and numbers i or number zero represent the first location of the array so that value will be stored in the first location of the array then the i plus plus will be executed and the value of i will be incremented by one so i becomes one it was zero before and one is less than five true so again the body of the for loop will be executed so the first statement in the body is c out we'll again see the message type integer colon and after that we are going to type a value and that value will be stored in numbers index one which is the second location and then again i will be incremented by one so i becomes two two less than five and then numbers two and similarly three and when the value of i becomes five four and four plus one five five is less than five no the condition is false in that case the body of the for loop will not be executed and the code after the for loop will be executed if there is any statement so i am going to type here the end of the program just so that you see that the program ends right so this program will only take input from the user and how many values five values right so let me compile the program and there are no errors as you can see on the right bottom of the screen I'm going to run the program and it says type an integer so I'm gonna say 100 then again and again the loop is going to execute four times starting from zero up to four and then the program ends and we don't see the values we provided because we have to create another for loop to display those values so after we have taken input from the user we are going to comment now display all the values of the array using for loop so I'm going to use the same loop again. So I'm going to copy the code from there. Control C to copy and click here and Control V to paste it. This time we don't want to take input from the user, but we want to display all the values of the array. So I'm going to remove the string and I'm, I'm going to type the name of the array, which is numbers and then the square brackets and within the square brackets, I'm going to specify the value of I and each time the loop executes uh, c out will display the values of the integer array so we'll see 100 and then 200 
and they will be printed on one line because I'm not using endl. So what I'm I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come here and put a comma so that you can see that all the values are comma separated <clears throat> and then I'm gonna type endl. So let's compile the program and let's run the program and this time I want to provide different values so let's say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and if I hit enter on the keyboard now this loop which you can see the second loop will be executed uh, after the end of the program statement and we shall, we shall see all these values uh, separated with comma right so I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard so that you can see the output and you can see 10 comma 20 comma 30 40 and up to 50 right so this is the question asked by one of your students in the group and this is the answer thanks for watching see you next time